What if I were to tell you that in the not too distant future, we'll have reached a point where things like cancer, diseases like cancer, will be viewed as something whilst being really horrible or preventable. Now, I actually think that this is not too far away. Sorry. Um, sorry. I think that we are actually not too far away from this. Um, stem cells have actually been used recently um, in curing some specific types of cancer. For example, uh, a leukemia. Leukemia is a cancer of the bone marrow. Now, inside the bone marrow, you'll find there are stem cells. These, these stem cells can become um, into very specific other types of cells, for example, red blood cells. And if someone has leukemia, those cells become cancerous. And one way that we actually prevent this is by doing something called a bone marrow transplant. Now, when that happens, um, the stem cells inside of the bone marrow will then start producing healthy cells that, they, that can then kill off the cancer cells. Now, that is just one example of cells that are being used to uh, ameliorate some forms of cancer. But I'm talking about something much larger. Now, before I can really get into this, we really need to understand what stem cells are. Now, at some point in time, we were all a small ball of cells that then decided to specialize into, for example, heart cells, into cells that went into our lungs, into skin cells that then made us who we are today. We consider stem cells to be the building blocks of life. Now, since, since, that, since then, we've realized that we could harness these powers of stem cells. And uh, what scientists discovered was within the first four to five days of embryo development, we could take the embryo out and use those stem cells into creating full, fully functional cells that we can then use in regenerative medicine. Until one day, uh, Shinya Yamanaka came along. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. He was an orthopedic surgeon. And what he found was a lot of the time, people would come to him, and they would have spinal cord injuries, and there was nothing he could do for them. If someone came in with a spinal cord injury, he would look at them and think, you know, I want to do everything I possibly could, but there isn't much. And with, because of this strong controversy behind, in, behind embryonic stem cells, he couldn't really bring the research that he needed. And it's something that frustrates me so much. And like it frustrates me, Shinya Yamanaka was frustrated. And what he thought was, OK, well, what if I made my own stem cells? What if I could take something, like, for example, skin cells, and then force them into doing what I want, into becoming stem cells? He called those induced pluripotent stem cells. He then dedicated the next 10 years of his life into researching this. And what he found was absolutely amazing. After the 10 years, he found four factors that when he injected into the skin cells of a rat would make the rat cells the rat skin cells think that they were stem cells, and they would start, when they were dividing, they would become more and more like these stem cells. At the moment, skin cells are unipotent. We're always growing skin cells, right, to make sure that we have a strong layer of skin on us always. But what Yamanaka did was he took that, something that could only become a skin cell, and he made it into something that could very well become any type of cell. And as a matter of fact, it is because of Shinya Yamanaka's research that I think that we have unlocked a strong potential and we've gotten over that controversial boundary that embryonic stem cells have brought forward with their ideas of sort of uh, with the whole fact that because they're embryos, it's unethical to use them. And what I want to move on is because of these induced pluripotent stem cells, we can now. Um, start creating cells without that sort of controversy, without the sort of need to have to worry about research funding and things like that. And so people have actually pushed forward with this. And in one specific lab in Tokyo, they, what they did was they went and uh, took induced pluripotent stem cells from rats, from rat skins, 
and they turn it into human liver cells, or liver cells that could be used for medicine, medical purposes. And they actually managed to make not a fully functioning liver, but parts of a liver that were fully functioning, but it wasn't actually the whole liver. And so what, he did, what, what they did was they um, put that into the rat, into various parts of rat, and amazingly enough, a vascular system grew around the liver, and the liver integrated itself very well into the rat, and it was actually fully functioning. But why would this matter to us at all if we can somehow put livers into rats? Like, I don't, like, obviously that doesn't apply to us right now because they're rats and we're humans. It might not be the same. And whilst that is true, they foresee that in the next 10 years, this might become commercially available. And that is why I think that this is such an important science because, I mean, a lot of you guys probably around six, seven minutes ago didn't even know what stem cells were. And that to me was absolutely tragic. Because of Shinya Yamanaka's work, um, I think that we should be much more aware of these cells and I think that we should actually start thinking about integrating them into medicine, which, whilst we are, I really see that coming within our lifetime. And that is why I think it's something that everyone in this room really needed to know about. Um, thank you. Sorry.